Myths. There are so many wine myths, wine rules, wine stereotypes. I love to slay wine myths. Myth number one, serve red wine in room temperature and super chill the whites. Wrong, flawed. When the French introduced the concept of room temperature for reds, they were talking about their own cellars under their homes in France. These subterranean cellars were between 55 and 60 degrees in temperature. It was naturally cool and moist beneath there, and that's what they referred to as optimal temperature for reds. But if you're in Tucson, Arizona, and you serve reds at room temperature, it's going to taste like cough syrup. So don't. 55 to 60. And if you're caught in a restaurant with warm red wine, room temperature wine, ask the waiter for a champagne bucket. Immerse the bottle for about three minutes, you're good to go. If the bucket was not offered, what may seem tacky on the surface is to grab one cube of ice from your water glass, introduce it into your wine glass under the table quietly for about 30 seconds to a minute max, you're back again to optimal temperature, remove the ice, you've not destroyed the wine, and you're enjoying it at the perfect temperature that it should be. Most fish do go with white wines, especially the fish is your traditional, lightly sauteed, baked, perhaps even grilled with a butter, lemon sauce, you're good to go with whites. But if your fish was a Chilean bass, very, very flavored, and with a Thai reduction, an oriental sauce, I might even consider a burgundy, a light body burgundy, a pirotage from South Africa to pair that particular fish with red. And the same thing with, with meats. Meats, well, typically accompanied with red wine, yes. If it's a filet mignon, there's nothing like a big red to go with it. But if your meat happens to be meat in an Indian dish or a Mexican dish, you're really better off with a acidic, well-balanced white wine, like a Riesling, or perhaps a Sancerre, to pair that particular meat. Whites first, reds later when you entertain. Again, yes, you may. I mean, there is some logic to starting with the lighter wines of the day and going on to the more denser wines. But it will not stop me from starting an evening with a Burgundy especially in a, a spring to summer transition. Sometimes I'd use port, which is typically a dessert wine, stereotypically relegated to the last wine you drink for the night. I might have it as the first wine you drink for the night because it opens up your taste buds and therefore lets you allow and enjoy the rest of the meal. Dessert wines with dessert. I could not agree with that concept at all. Dessert by nature is sweet and syrupy. Dessert wine by nature is sweet and syrupy. Two like poles repel. I would rather have dessert stand alone with no wine accompaniment. Coffee is a much better pairer to dessert, quite candidly. But if I were to have a dessert wine, like a sauterne, perhaps a sherry or a Bums de Venise, I would just have it standalone and pair it with cheeses, raw milk cheeses, at the end of the meal. The French, of course, take it to a different level. They sometimes serve salad at the very end of the meal with the dessert wine. So dessert with dessert wine, that's a no for me. Older vintages taste better than newer vintages. I've heard that stereotype and myth in some very coveted wines and vintages, and that is true. And the prices of older vintages reflect that reality. But often enough, older vintages are poorly cellared. So it really depends on who owned the wine, the provenance, and who cellared it before you to make the determination. Younger wine, you're guaranteed that it's still intact. But an older wine, it could be a remarkable claret or just the beginnings of vinegar. Fine wine belongs in a formal cellar. I hear that all the time. And yes, all my life I've had formal cellars in my homes and I've thoroughly enjoyed having those cellars and the the experience of going down to the cellar there's a whole ritual to opening the cellar door encountering the change in temperature picking a bottle of your choice and going back to your guests i get that but if you did not have a formal cellar you can do with a wine fridge or 
even store it in a cool, dry place at your home, perhaps a basement, as far as it's away from vibration, so no washers and dryers, away from light, so no ventilators or windows, and you're basically good to go.